Hello there, once again this is G, and if you thought that oxygen not included just couldn't possibly get any more over-engineered, then this is a video for you. And if you find it helpful, then smash that like button for the algorithm. Today, I'll show you an over-engineered way to liquefy hydrogen using no space materials whatsoever. And yes, we will be using water to do the actual hydrogen liquefaction. This machine here chills hydrogen in three stages. Let me pull up an overlay. Okay, so first of all, we have the stage one. This is the ethanol pre-chiller. And this takes hydrogen gas down to about negative 95 degrees. And then it goes over to this side here. This is the stage two. This is an oxygen, liquid oxygen bath. And it takes the hydrogen gas down to about negative 197 or so. And at the bottom of this bath here, we have a few thermal regulators. And they're dumping their heat into this bath here, which is then cooled by the aqua tuners at the top. The aqua tuners are circulating liquid oxygen as well. And these thermal regulators, they take the hydrogen down to about negative 240. And we're almost there, but not quite. And we need a little bit more to get it down to liquid. And that's where stage three comes in over here. This takes the hydrogen down to negative 255 or so and liquefies it. Now in stage three, we are using a steel aqua tuner here and we're not using any super coolant. So how does this work? Well, that's where the water comes in. You can see here, we have polluted water and regular water at one kilo per second and negative 254, and they're alternating. And this works because at one kilo per second, water will not change state, or any liquid for that matter, will not change state in the pipes and it will not burst the pipes. But we cannot simply use only plain water because if we did that, when the aqua tuner stops eventually, the one kilo packets would stack and the pipes would burst and the dupes would be very sad. So instead of that, what we do is fill the pipes with alternating one kilo per second of water and polluted water, and check out the link below to see how to set that up. But let's have a look at the plumbing right now. Okay, now I know it's a little bit busy, but just bear with me. And right away I wanna mention that below here, we have three stage liquid oxygen machine, and I think I'll make a separate video about that. But for now, let's have a look at the hydrogen machine. First of all, we have the ethanol bath. This is cooled by an ethanol loop here with an aqua tutor, dumps the heat into this turbine. This is followed by stage two over here, which is the liquid oxygen bath. And this is cooled by three liquid oxygen loops, which dump the heat into aqua tuners and turbine. This liquid oxygen bath cools not just hydrogen, but also the thermoregulators, as I mentioned. Keeps everything nice and cool here. And finally, we have here the stage three, which is alternating water and polluted water, one kilogram packets. And we also have one little gap in between. This is because of the number of pipe segments, this is important. And you can take this as low or as high in temperature as you want. In this case, we're down to negative 257. And at one kilo, they will not change state and it will not burst the pipes. So this is the magic of cooling hydrogen down to liquid using water. Finally, we have this liquid hydrogen pipe that's coming out, taking it away to a reservoir. And also we have this water loop over here that goes all the way around and it just cools all the turbines. Okay, let's have a look at the venting. Okay, once again below we have the liquid oxygen machine and that's a story for another video, but I'll just say that I did use this to create this liquid oxygen bath here in the first place. But here we have the hydrogen pipe coming in, going through a shutoff, and this uh, controls the input into the entire machine. And then this goes through the ethanol bath, followed by the oxygen bath, followed by three regulators. Uh, there was four initially here, but by turning down the temperature of the oxygen and by turning down the initial temperature of the hydrogen, you don't really need this fourth regulator. So three is fine. And this makes it a little bit more efficient as well. Then it goes into this vent here, and this is where it liquefies. But in case the vent goes over pressure, it will recirculate back into this loop. Okay, now let's have a look at the power. Okay, so in this case, we have pretty much everything connected with a heavy watt conductive wire and it's plugged right into the mains and you can see it's pretty loaded here. But you don't have to do this. You can use transformers or wired in a different way. This is just an example. Here we're just using it straight into the mains and we're using the heavy watt conductive plates to connect everything up and keep it nice and sealed. And on the other side we have a vacuum of space. So this is fine. And finally, I just want to touch base on the automation of which there's very little. First of all, we have the main shutoff here and the pump for hydrogen. And this is controlled by the amount of liquid in this reservoir here, which stores liquid hydrogen. And if it's over 90, it's going to go ahead and stop the process. And if it's under 80, it will restart the liquefying process again. 
So if we look here, we have also a thermal sensor. And if the liquid hydrogen is below negative 258, it will stop this aqua tuner from running because we do not want to freeze the hydrogen. Beyond that, we just have the standard thermal sensors here. We have negative 98 set for the ethanol. And then we have negative 198 set for all the oxygen loops. The rest of the automation deals with refueling rockets and liquid oxygen machines. So I won't go into that right now. One other thing I want to touch base on is materials. Now this is important, so here I've used gold instead of insulated anything really. And that's because we're dealing with a liquid oxygen and it can really easily flash boil. And when you have flash boiling happening, you've probably seen it happen with abyssalite. Same thing happens with insulated tiles. What you want to do is use something that stores as little heat as possible and is very conductive for heat. In this case, it's gold. And we have that here and here and here and here for everything. Now, in this case, below here, I've used igneous rock, and if I look at the temperature, you see what happened. It's at minus 103, and this happens when gases transfer heat into insulation, and if you look at here, it's even lower, minus 180, and this is because there was a lot of flash boiling happening of oxygen as it was chilling. But had I known better at the time, I, I would have used gold in this setup. At that point, I've learned and used gold, and we're fine here. Beyond that, we have igneous rock or ceramic. We have the plumbing is made of ceramic. And this here, this is just a shield. Just in case there's something hot on the side, we don't want it to accidentally touch this really cold uh, bath here and cause all sorts of problems happening. And this can very easily boil off if you're not careful. So you got to really be careful not to have something hot touch this by accident. Down here, we have hydrogen gas, which submerges these guys. And there's a little vent here, and this gets filled with hydrogen until it goes over pressure, at which point the hydrogen loop here, you'll see it will just continue through this regulator, which, again, is no longer used. So this kind of a legacy bit that was used to pre-fill this. And finally, I just want to mention that this is not a practical build by any stretch of imagination. It uses gobs of power, and that includes this hydrogen and oxygen. We have lots of thermal regulators and aqua tuners going here. And these steam turbines really don't do them any justice. But if you're bored and you just want to do this with no space materials whatsoever, then you can totally go nuts and build this. And you can hook this up to a sour gas boiler generator with lots of power or a regular smelter with lots of power or whatever else you want. And, you know, when you don't have anything to do with your power, this really isn't the problem. And that's all I have for you right now. Again, this has been Greasy Hammer. And if you like this video, please feel free to share, subscribe, and absolutely smash that like button for the algorithm. And stay tuned for more. Thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye-bye.